Hey guys, alright so in this video we're going to start doing some examples uh, of using the formal definition of a limit to show that some limits actually exist. So here, uh, example one, use the definition of a limit to show that the limit as uh, x approaches 4 of x plus 1 equals 5. So it's pretty straightforward, right? We could just do this by direct substitution um, and this is trivial pretty much. We can just substitute 4 in for x and show that it's 5. Um, but how do we use the definition to actually do that? So that's kind of the hard part here. So um, if we use the definition, then what we want to have is this. So uh, WTS is short for want to show. So what we want to show is that for every epsilon greater than zero, there is a delta greater than zero such that if uh, absolute value of x minus four is less than delta, then absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So here our f of x is x plus one and our l is five, okay? So we want to have this, all right? So once we've written this down, then what we do is uh, we'll come back up here and we're going to say, all right, we want to have this, uh, x plus one minus five less than epsilon, okay? So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. So first we can drop these parentheses, okay? So we're just going to have uh, x plus one minus five, absolute value of all that less than epsilon. Now we can simplify a little more. X plus one minus five is X minus four. All right. So we've reduced this condition that we want. Well, we reduced it to this. So in other words, what we have or what we want is this. We want uh, if X minus four uh, absolute value is less than delta, then oops, then uh, X minus four is less than epsilon. All right. Because the condition we want is this, but this simplifies to absolute value x minus 4, right? So in other words, what we want to have is this. If absolute value of x minus 4 is less than delta, then absolute value of x minus 4 is less than epsilon. Well, how do we guarantee that? So the next step is to pick a delta that's going to make this always true. So how do we do that? Um, we're just going to pick a delta. So let's just choose, uh, let's choose. choose delta equal to epsilon, all right? So um, we're not working with any uh, specific numbers here when we have epsilons and deltas, right? Um, so we're just gonna pick a delta, and the delta depends on the epsilon, all right? Because we're given an epsilon and we want to give back a delta, and delta is allowed to depend on the epsilon, because here for every epsilon greater than zero, there is a delta that depends on the epsilon such that if uh, this is true, then this is true. All right, so basically what's happening is um, we want to guarantee that if x minus 4 absolute value is less than delta, then absolute value of x minus 4 is less than epsilon. And we can guarantee that just by choosing delta to equal epsilon, right? Because uh, if delta equals epsilon, then this happens automatically right away. Uh, so if delta and epsilon are the same thing, then if x minus 4 is less than delta, then automatically uh, x minus 4 absolute value has to be less than epsilon because delta and epsilon are the same thing. So that would be how we answer this one here. Um, this isn't really very illuminating because there's nothing kind of interesting happening here. Um, we just chose delta equal to epsilon and uh, it's kind of hard to see how to generalize that. But let's go ahead and do another example um, that's kind of similar to this but a little more complicated. So let's uh, erase some of this here. All right, so we're going to leave uh, most of that, I guess. Uh, and example two is going to be the same thing, but um, slightly more complicated function. So let's say we want to show, uh, or use the definition of a limit, this is example two, use the definition of a limit to show that uh, the limit as x approaches uh, five of four x minus seven equals uh, 13. Okay, so we know from a direct substitution, we know this is true, right? Uh, as x approaches 5, take the limit, 4x minus 7, uh, that's going to be equal to 13, okay, just from direct substitution. So how do we show that with the formal definition of a limit? Well, let's see. What we want to have uh, is this. Okay, we want to show that uh, if, or we want to show that uh, for every epsilon greater than 0, there is a delta greater than 0 such that if the absolute value of x minus 5 
is less than delta, then the absolute value of 4x minus 7 uh, minus 13 is less than epsilon. All right. So this is what we want to show. All right. So we're going to uh, approach this the same way we approached example 1. So let's go ahead and come back up here and do that. So we're going to start with this. Um, 4x minus 7 minus 13 absolute values less than epsilon. So let's bring that up here. Absolute value of 4x minus 7 minus 13 less than epsilon. Okay. So just like before, the first thing we can do is drop these parentheses. So we're going to have absolute value of 4x minus 7 minus 13 less than epsilon. Okay. So now what? Now we can uh, simplify a little bit. And we're going to have 4x minus 20, uh, absolute value of that less than epsilon. All right, so now what do we do? Now, um, notice here there's a common factor of 4 that we can pull out. So 4x minus 20, that's going to be uh, this. 4 times x minus 5 less than epsilon. OK. So we have that so far. Um, now, remember, uh, if you have absolute value stuff like this, 4 is just a constant, so we can just pull it out of the absolute value. Um, or really, what we're going to do here is use this property. Uh, absolute value of AB equals absolute value of A times the absolute value of B. All right. Whatever A and B are, we can just do that. Okay. So let's go ahead and use that property um, of absolute values. So we're going to have uh, absolute value of 4 times absolute value of X minus 5 less than epsilon. And absolute value of 4, that's just 4, right? So 4 there. OK. So now um, let's divide both sides of this inequality by 4. So we're going to have this. Absolute value of x minus 5 is less than epsilon over 4. OK. So that's good. Um, now what we've done is we've taken this right here, absolute value of 4x minus 7 minus 13 less than epsilon. We've taken that and we've reduced it to this, uh, absolute value of x minus 5 less than epsilon over 4. So in other words, what we want to have is this. Um, for every epsilon greater than 0, there is a delta such that if absolute value of x minus 5 is less than delta, then absolute value of x minus 5 is less than epsilon over 4. Well, how can we guarantee that? All right, so if we want to write it uh, shorter, how are we going to do that? So let's come back up here. We'll say. Um, what we want is this. We want to have this. Uh, if absolute value of x minus 5 is less than delta, less than delta, uh, we want if that down here, then absolute value of x minus 5 is less than epsilon over 4. All right. So what we wanted originally was this, but we reduced it to this. Okay. So in other words, we want to have uh, if absolute value of x minus 5 is less than delta, then absolute value of x minus 5 is less than epsilon over 4. So we're just going to choose uh, delta equal to epsilon over 4. All right. So if we just choose that, uh, then we're all set. And that's pretty much it, because uh, if delta equals epsilon over 4, then this is automatically guaranteed. Okay. If the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than delta, then the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than epsilon over 4. So we're just going to choose delta equals epsilon over 4. Because remember, uh, we're allowed to do that, right? We're given an epsilon, and we want to give back a delta, which is allowed to depend on epsilon, such that uh, if this is true, then this is going to be true, right? So because we guarantee that this is true, oops, uh, then we automatically guarantee this is true because they're the same thing. So that's kind of a, a couple of simple examples of how the formal definition of a limit can be used to show um, that a limit exists. So in the next video, we're going to do one more example, which is a little more complicated, um, and it's good to look at. So let's go ahead and do that next.